What is going on guys? We are back with another Smite video and we are going over the newest patch, patch 5.6, Inner Demon. Now, this is not an April Fool's joke. We're done with that. I know a lot of people are upset. That video got a bunch of dislikes. Y'all didn't like that April Fool's joke? Come on. Don't be so butthurt. But um, this is a real patch. This is Wednesday, so this is patch 5.6. There's a lot of updates in this. Um, there's a new adventure mode. There are new um, items like... I'll get into it. Like, they introduced the loading frames, then they introduced level up effects, something like that. A new aesthetic that you can earn. Um, really cool new skins, as usual. They've been on a roll with that. Um, some god fixes, some god balances, and Terra. Terra is getting huge changes. Um, I didn't watch the patch notes, so I'm a little raw. Go oh, I should have rephrased that. <laughs> um, I don't really know everything that uh, is in this patch, so I'm going to take it a little bit slower and read a little more carefully than I usually do, but we're going on to the skins first. I will note that I do a video on every single skin when they release the PTS, so if you're interested in seeing what these skins look like, be sure to subscribe so you'll be able to know when those come out. First one is Inner Demon Hell. This is a limited skin. This is part of a bundle that's coming with the new game mode. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like Angel and Demon. Uh... Hell, you can always do really cool stuff. With Heaven you. has sent me here, and I am here to- Shut it, wench! Your insufferable babbling is annoying! That was a really cool voice line. I really like that. Obviously, we have Jackal Tech Anubis. This is the reward for the new Smite birthday. If you buy all three bundles, you get this skin. Roger, roger. We'll take out their units first and try and seize their base. That's Stand a by. really, really unique, um, like, voice. I've never- Roger, roger. We'll take out their units first and try and seize their base. Stand by. No, no, that's really weird. I like it though. They usually, they usually have the same theme to the voices when they do that. But this one is super different. I've never heard anything like that. We have Dashing Deceiver Loki. This is going to be a part of the last bundle along with Abyssal Executioner Shock. And these two look amazing. The Shock skin. He is Cthulhu'd out and it looks badass. I can't wait to do a review on that. Loki... I'm not a big fan of the skin, but it's really cool that it's on Loki. Like, it just... Look into your heart and find the god within. It is your destiny. Obviously, they're going for that, um... Uh, what do you call those? Like, the old parties where they all wear the masks and stuff. Like, a masquerade. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. We, of course, we got additional Executioner Chalk. This looks... Good God. Once I get inside their heads, <laughs> it won't be long until they become entirely insane. Jesus. Okay, I've been um hyping up Smite and High res what they've been doing with their skins, because they've been knocking them out of the park. And now they're stepping it up with the voice lines. We heard that Jackal Tech Anubis, and now that? Usually when they do these demonic skins, they all, like Stargazer Anubis, they all have the same, like, tone, but... They're really uh, flirting with different f effects for these voices. <laughs> that I get. Once I get inside That's their heads, <laughs> it won't be long until they become entirely insane. Like I was expecting that to just essentially sound like um, Stargazer Anubis, but no, hundred percent different. We have Violet Sorceress Aphrodite. This one's a limited, but I'm not sure. What she's in yes, yes. Magic always comes with a price. But who listens to rules these days? She looks like someone out of World of Warcraft. Or, uh, um, what's that girl's name in Paladins? Lelan? Or Lilan? Lilan? I never play her. But, uh, Road Rebel Hercules here. This looks pretty badass, too. He looks like he might be a part of the, um, uh, was it the Warlord skins? Kumba Karna has one. In the past, people took things for granted. And things they wasted, we kill each other for now. Uh, along with that, Hercules and Shock both get their Masteries updated, so that'll be cool to actually look at in-game. This is the new Adventure Mode. It's Inner Demon Arena. It's part of, you know, Inner Demon Hell. It's going to be set in the arena, but they're making some big-time changes to it. So, new environment, new features. Dangerous water pools will spawn on the map, and they'll kill players if they stand in them too long. Uh, new objectives. There's three Demon Serpents that spawn in the center of the map every two minutes. Uh, whichever team kills at least two of them gets the Titan Juggernaut. So it's a new way to get the Titan, which is pretty cool. These Juggernauts follow normal arena rules, uh, except they will attack nearby enemies when stopped. Okay, so that's a different effect. That's really cool. Demon Jungle Buffs. All Jungle Buffs uh, will last 60 seconds instead of 120, um, but they provide more powerful effects. So the Red Buff gives you 20% movement speed in addition to power. 
The blue buff gives you 10% damage mitigation in addition to the cooldown and mana. And then the purple buff uh, provides haste. Oh, wow. And if you don't know what haste is, haste is um, where you can... Whenever you hit a basic attack, you can keep going. Like haste and fatalis. Essentially like that. Haste, haste and fatalis. There you go. Um, the bonus round also returns. Um, which the bonus round is after the actual arena match is done. There's a part two. And it's a 5v5 death match to the end. It, it's just the center of the arena. It's very small. You have nowhere to move. And whichever team comes out on the end gets like extra points. So it's kind of like two game modes built into one quality of life the respawn timers have been changed so respawn timers for a team is now consistent based on the time performance this avoids uh the chances of a team dying and having an unexpectedly long or short respawn timer teams will respawn in waves set by the time of the first player to die okay so that's kind of interesting we'll see how that works out tickets earned an in-game visual has been added to help players see what actions they are doing that subtract tickets from the enemy team Okay, so I'll have to actually see that in game to really understand that. Portal animations, minions, and juggernauts now walk directly into the portal instead of animating in ways that can confuse players. Uh, and the inner demon bundle, um, this is, you don't have to get this bundle to play this game mode, but it can help because you get bonus points earned if you buy it. It's kind of like Daji Senpai bundle with the um, Fox Adventure mode. You also get the season five gold key for the vault. You get an inner demon level up effects, jump stamp, pedestal, and you get the inner demon hell skin. So that is how you get the hell skin for the bundle. New god selection lobby. So nothing crazy has changed here, but they changed the lighting and environment art, um, which conveys which side you're on, whether it's order or chaos. So you should be able to know that before actually getting in the game. Not that it really matters, um, but it's just cool to have. And it will let you know beforehand if you're on the higher elo side or the lower elo side so you're gonna find out eventually but now you just find out two minutes quicker um death marks this is the new item i was talking about it's a new custom uh customizable item there we go equip these to leave your mark on the ground whenever you slay an enemy god so that's pretty cool um it's kind of like a jump stamp how whenever you jump it leaves a mark well this time if you kill somebody it's gonna leave a mark on the ground uh, i'm guessing it stays there all match would be my guess um not quite sure um that i don't know that could get a little annoying though because a lot of um deaths can happen in a match so you might have uh stamps everywhere or maybe if you kill someone and then you kill someone again it's going to get rid of the previous one and remark it there i don't know we'll have to see it could really help um or hurt you though because you might you're going to find out where someone has died i mean if you're communicating with their team you'll know that anyway but i don't know um they're introducing three new ones to start off with there's the kill face death mark the rip death mark and a skull death mark um i'm guessing the skull is gonna be a skull rip's gonna be like a tombstone that says rip probably i don't know what kill face is the turn up bundle this is the last bundle for the smite birthday you get the abyssal uh, shock skin loki skin dashing deceiver announcer pack so pretty cool announcer pack coming raining skulls emote and enigma chest and the smite birthday present which is basically a key to unlock an awesome chest <clears throat> speaking of awesome chests we have some new additions we've got brimstone beast camazots brimstone demon thor uh grovekeeper shington and sweet tooth soul godlike chest we got digimir 9000 scarlet coven isis and worm slayer uller the fantasy point store rotation is king bacchus marksman ram and solstice hell on to item balances. This is not changes. These are just uh, some of the balance. Rage. They're kind of balancing it out. Uh, item balance. <laughs> um, less crit on the passive and more on base. So they increase the crit strike from 20% to 30% and no longer provide, provides an additional 10% um, on evolving. So less risk, more reward, I guess. Soul gem. Decrease bonus damage from 40% to 30% of your magical power. Um, this has been like removed from the game like two times. They wanted to reintroduce it. Um, had to tweak it a little bit. Still making some tweaks to it. So hopefully we'll get it right eventually. Warlock Staff. Also seen some changes recently. Decrease the health per stack from 4 to 3. This item now grants 500 health when fully completed. Down from 600. So some nerfs overall. I like the change. Warlock um, Sash or Warlock Staff I should say now. Um, has seen a lot of changes as well. Kind of like Soul Gem. Shield of Thorns, I'm torn on this one. I love the change because Shield of Thorns is annoying as hell, especially when you're playing Anubis. Um, but I hate the change because I buy Shield of Thorns almost every time because it is annoying as hell. So, eh, give take. 
I still am going to use it all the time because I love Shield of Thorns. If I see an Anubis on the other team, 100% I am buying Shield of Thorns, and I will walk up and let him wrap and ult me just to see his health go by. <laughs> um, so what all they're doing is decreasing the amount of damage that's reflected from 50% to 40%. It's still going to hurt the enemy, it's just not going to obliterate them. They can't obliterate themselves as easily, um, and the same for the upgraded version. Trying to balance out some of the defensive items here. Height of the Nemean Lion decreased the protections from 80 to 70. Its passive is already pretty good, so just getting the base stats down a little bit. Legion Helm has fallen out big time since Season 3 and 4. Um, they're trying to bump that up a little bit, increasing the protections from 30 to 40. Shogun's Kasari, same thing, kind of fallen out since last season. They're increasing the protections from 40 to 50, but decreasing the passive attack speed from 25 to 20. Alright, I like that. I mean... Me, personally, I never really got this item unless I had a lot of people who could make use of the attack speed. So if I was playing with, like, Kakulin, Freya, and, I don't know, Chiron, it would be a good item to get because that's three gods who could benefit from the attack speed. So I might start getting it now because the attack speed's going away a little bit, but the protections go up a little bit. So we'll see. Jade Emperor's Crown increased the physical protection from 50 to 60. Love this. I am a person when I, I'm a support main, even when I'm not playing the support role, I like to play Guardians and play them aggressively and get the Void Stone, Jade Emperor's Crown combo. So I'm all in for this one. Bulwark of Hope. Uh, this item has a long history in Smite. Yes, it does. This was like, I still like to get this item every now and then, especially when I play like Fenrir, Thor, or any of those gods from Season 3 that can make use of that cookie-cutter build that was Warrior Tabai, Breastplate of Valor, Jotun's Wrath, Bulwark of Hope, that, like, just basic thing. I can still build that and still do good with it. To me, the build never really went out. Um, obviously, it's not meta, but you can still uh, do well with it. All they're really doing is decreasing the cost from 2550 to 2400 to, I don't know, make it purchased more, I guess. Pestilence increased the cost by 100 this I like here, these two changes. They're trying to not make anti-heal as potent and trying to bring healing in a little more because anti-heal items have gotten huge buffs recently. So this one increases the cost. It's not going to do a whole lot, but Rod of Ass Claps. Yes, I know it's Asclepius, but it's Ass Claps. Rod of Ass Claps increased the magical power from 75 to 90. That's a pretty big spike there. Um, and increased the combat healing from 10% to 15%. Okay. I might be playing some Aphrodite a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Ooh, and with Terra's changes, I'm not exactly sure what they changed to Terra. Uh, I know her ult is different. I will tell you that. Spoiler alert, her ult's different. I'm not sure what it is, though, so it'll be exciting to see. <clears throat> Toxic Blade, another anti-heal item. Increased the pen from 10 to 15, but reduced the stack count of anti-heal from 3 to 2 stacks. So 60% anti-heal goes down to 40%. So you see what I mean by balancing that out? Uh, but they also increased the stack duration from 5 seconds to 8 seconds. So, overall, I would say this is more of a... Mm, nah, I think it's kind of neutral. I was going to say a buff because you do get extra pen and the stacks do last longer. Um, but going from 60% anti-heal to 40% is kind of a big dip. So, I would say it's just kind of a neutral balance. God fixes. Uh, this one I'm so excited about. Daji. The one reason I never really liked playing as Daji is because I couldn't see her ult. Every time I went up in the ult, it took me like three seconds to even find my targeter. And by then, I had to jump down. So, what they're doing is making adjustments to the targeter so it's more visible. Bless up, Smite. Um, tier. Tier's Fearless. Targets hit by Fearless no longer lose their hitbox when being pushed by Tier. And can be damaged. Okay. I never really noticed anything with that, but... Oh no. They're not nerfing Yacht. Okay. No. They're just changing the effects of the portal deploy to better match the actual deploy speed. I really like that change. I never... Giannis is my main mage. Oh, no, probably Changa. Changa and then Giannis, but I never really noticed that in-game. But looking back, I can see why the change was necessary. I know what they're talking about with that little, uh, like, delay. Um, or not delay, but I don't know. It, it, it's needed. Naja's Wind Fire Wheels... Uh, Naja and the player he has grabbed are now damageable upon landing. Rather than losing their collision, uh, they gain player pass-through, and Naja gains CC immunity for the duration of their landing animations. I don't think that's a huge change. I think that's more targeted towards 
ranked even pro scenes because you have to really good lord y'all hear that wind um you have to really time anything when Naja lands because it's really fast when it happens sir Ket, her last breath uh sir Ket and the player she grabbed okay so they're kind of doing this whole thing with everybody are now damageable upon during the throw rather than losing their collusion they gain the player okay so same thing as Naja with that um hercules targets hit by driving strike no longer lose their hitbox while being pushed by hercules and can be damaged okay so i understand the changes now it's not something crucial but they're just kind of balancing it out and fixing it for everybody so sir Ket and naja got the same changes and then tier and um hercules kind of got the same changes with that now onto the god balance Ares has no escape no longer requires a line of sight to grab onto enemies what does this mean Okay, you can hide behind walls, but there is no escape. Areas will now be able to affect players that are behind line of sight, helping them connect with enemies in tight corridors or targets that dip behind cover. Oh. Okay, shit. All right. As an Ares player, I like this. Okay. Uh, Cerberus. Whoa. Okay, okay. So Cerberus is getting a lot of changes. It's paralyzing spit. Now goes through walls. Okay. Has numerous adjustments to better reflect the targeter. Players should notice uh, the ability feels more accurate. I I like this change because if you don't know his spit, there are three targeters. So you got one that goes down the middle and two that kind of come up and they form a triangle. Well, if you hit all of them, it stuns the target. But the actual targeter is like a little wonky. It doesn't... You, there are some cases where it would look like you're hitting them for the stun but you were just like a little off and it wouldn't actually get the stun. So I think they're adjusting it to make that more clear. The radius of each projectile has been increased. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and the stun uh, from this ability is now subject to diminishing returns. Soul Expulsion increased the range from 50 to 55. That's his leap. I like that because this leap is really, really short. Um, and Stygian Torment no longer requires line of sight. So same thing with uh, Ares in that. Ah, okay. That's interesting. We'll see. I might be playing some Cerberus. I've always loved Cerberus. Even though he fell out and people said he sucked, I still had fun playing him. Some games I never really did well, but he's just so fun to play. So making him a little better, I'll take it. Um, Hell, her stance. Updated pass a meter to show cooldowns of her opposite stance. Eh, uh, they're, just, they're doing that same thing they did with Uller to make it a little bit easier with the stance changing gods, but I don't know. It's whatever. DK removed these, uh, removed this projectile offset. This ability now fires directly down center and matches the targeter. Her light basic attack removed. Okay, same thing. And then all ability icon art has been updated. So Hell's looking different on her ability icon. So that'll be exciting to see. Um, actually, like full visible, full visual changes coming to Hell with that. Naja. Uh, her fire, or his fire wheels, uh, remove the damaging hit as the enemy god begins to fall. Increased initial and landing damage from 60 to 220 is now 80 to 280. So 50% of your phas <laughs> I just got super tongue tied. 50% of your physical power now up to 65% of your physical power. So big buffs there on that. Nemesis divine judgment decreased the damage used to be 20 to 40 is now 20 to 30%. Of the target's current health so just late game getting some big time nerfs there Nuwa, her shining metal decreased stun duration used to be 1 to 1.5 is now 1 to 1.4 not a whole lot there really just late game um soul soul getting some nerfs i'm guessing yeah okay um unstable manifestation decrease the bonus attack damage from 25 percent to 20 percent decrease the attack speed from 1.2 to 1 um, which in total goes from 30 percent to 25 percent and they also decrease the magical power bonus from 1% to 8 or 0.8%, which overall goes from 25% to 20%. So really just 5% dips on everything. I think Soul's still going to be fine. It, it, she's just perf been performing very well. Um, so I think she'll still be fine. This is just going to balance her out a little bit. Terra, this is the change I've been looking for. Monolith, this ability now roots enemies when shattered. All right, so going back to that. Um, and her ultimate, new ultimate, Earthen Fury. Here we go. Terra channels her strength into the world around her, buffing her allies and debuffing enemies. So she's got the same concept in the sense that you hit her alts, everybody gets buffed. So it, that's the same premise, but I guess they're changing what it does. Allies gain 10% damage mitigation, as well as heal over time. 
um, and protective stones that heal the ally if all four are activated. Enemies receive 10% more damage from all sources and harmful stones that damage the enemy if all four are activated. Stones are activated when the ally or enemy takes damage. Um, so what exactly? I had, I don't know what the changes are here for sure um, because I never played Terra enough to really know what her alt did exactly. I know that they had the same four stones before and if you hit all of four of them, you were healed. So, okay, so you get a heal over time, 5, 8 to 17, plus 2% of your magical power every 5 seconds, or every 0.5 seconds for 10 seconds. So, allies gain as well as a heal over time. Oh, so they just get a heal over time in general. So you don't even have to do anything to get the heal. You don't have to knock down the four stones to get that heal. So, Terra bumps her ult, everybody's getting healed. That's, okay, <laughs> that's a little insane. But you also get the heal for the four stones. And then the damage. Okay, so that's what they're doing. You still have the four stones around you. And if an enemy gets rid of all those four stones, you're going to heal for 100 to 300 plus 30% of your magical power. But even if you're not in combat and you're just sitting there, you're going to get a heal over time effect from Terra's ultimate. And then this is the damage for the enemies. It's only on a 90 second cooldown now, which is a little less than it was before, I think. <clears throat> but it does cost 100 mana. So, nothing too crazy on Terra's ultimate in terms of how they changed it. It's still the same thing. It's still, you know, the same ultimate, but they added that heal over time, which is pretty cool. Um, they might have done some other changes to it. I'm not quite sure. If you guys know exactly what was changed, leave a comment and I'll pin it so everyone can know. I'll probably look it up after, but... Last update, Thos Evade and Punish. This ability will no longer begin its cooldown until Thoth fires the stunning projectile. Eh, okay, I'm not too concerned about that. That is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. Hit subscribe for more content like this, especially if you want to see the skins when they come out. That is it for this video, guys, and until next time, peace.